How you doing everybody? In this exercise you can learn about using custom data attributes. And they allow authors to create custom data to apply to their HTML elements when no other attributes make sense to use to store extra data. They help extend the information that HTML elements can communicate to a program or script. Okay, in an example.html file, I'm just going to start by creating a div. Make sure I close it. And I'm going to give each of the divs that I create a class name of rockets. And I'm just going to demonstrate with two. And it doesn't matter if I have two or 500. Now in my CSS, I'm quickly going to adjust the background color of the page. And I'm going to put in a style rule for those rockets, those divs with the class of rockets. So they'll each have position absolute. That way I can fly them around on the screen. And they have a background URL set. That way they get the image in them of the rocket. And we set the width and height to the size of the rocket image. And we make the left position zero pixels because we're going to be moving that left position through JavaScript. And here we have a transition property in place. That way the left position animates. So it's not just an instant change in the left position. It's an animated transition effect, so we'll see them flying. Now, if we take a look at this right now, all we're going to see is two rockets stacked on top of each other because they have position absolute. Now we're going to start setting our custom data attributes. Each custom data attribute that you create has to start with these five characters, data hyphen. That way it can be accessed as a data set in JavaScript. So data hyphen altitude is equal to for this rocket in particular, it'll be 100. Then I want another custom data attribute to represent the speed data. And that will make equal to something like 3.5 for this particular rocket. And then the last data attribute that I'm going to add, we'll call rocket hyphen distance. And make that equal to 700. Now let's just take those custom data attributes that we put in the first rocket and let's apply them to the second rocket. This one will have an altitude of 200. We'll make this speed 5.0 and we'll leave the distance exactly the same so they fly the same distance but they'll have a different speed and a different altitude. Now before we get into showing you how to access these data attributes through JavaScript, let's show you how to target any elements that you want that happen to have a particular data attribute and value. So you can type in div.rockets to target the rockets class. And we're using the attribute selectors in CSS to target the data altitude equal 100. And let's just rotate that at 90 degrees so you can see exactly what's going on. Let's go ahead and render that. So you can see we have two rockets stacked on top of one another. But the one with the altitude of 100 is rotated 90 degrees now. So that's how you can target any elements with the uh, custom data attribute and value that you want through CSS. So I'll just put that on 10 degrees. That way it's not such a dramatic rotation. So only the element with the data altitude of 100 will be affected through CSS. Now what we'll do is write a little simple JavaScript program that's going to use all of these custom data attributes and their values to activate these rockets and animate them to fly the way we want them to fly. Now I'll pop the few lines of script in place that I wrote for this example and I'll explain all of them very quickly. First we're creating variables. We're initializing these variables. One is called rockets and that's going to hold all of the rockets that are in the array that we're going to get from using query selector all. Then we have the altitude, speed, and distance variables initialized. Now down here the last line of the script, we're using window.addEventListener for the load event. And when the window is fully loaded and all the elements are ready to be scripted against, then we're going to run the activate rockets function, which is this function sitting right here. The first thing we do in this activate rockets function is we use the rockets variable and we make that equal to document.querySelectorAll for divs with the rockets class. So what that gives you is an array, a node list of all of the rockets in the document that happen to have that class. So what we're going to do is for loop over that array, over the length of that array. That way we can affect each rocket in the array. So in the for loop, the first thing we're going to do is get the altitude, speed, and distance for each rocket 
that is set in the custom data attributes that we put in place. So let's take a look at the altitude variable first. What we do is we access each element in the array as it's coming through and we use the data set property to have access to all these custom data attributes and all you have to do is say data set dot altitude which will get you the value 100 for this first rocket and it'll give you a value of 200 for the second rocket same for the speed and the distance now let's take note here of when we're accessing the rocket distance custom attribute we're camel casing it even though down here you can see it has a hyphen in between the two words in JavaScript, we remove the hyphen and we just camel case it in order to access that value. So we successfully have altitude, speed, and distance for each rocket. Then we're going to use JavaScript to simply change the CSS, the style, for the top to give it an altitude that we want. So the top property gets adjusted. The transition duration property gets uh, adjusted to give it proper speed that is set down in these custom attributes. And then we change the left property to the distance. And you can see both of ours have a distance of 700 pixels. So that's the distance they'll fly across the screen. So basically, you're just accessing the data set and all the individual custom data attributes. And then you can apply those to your program in any way that you like. And you have to just think creatively. You can use this for form inputs, paragraph elements. You can use custom data attributes in lists, uh, buttons, any elements that you want. You don't have to use it in the way that I'm using it here to create animations or whatever. You can use it in any custom data handling circumstances that you want. Just think creatively. Now let's see the effect of our program. And you can see we have two rockets that are traveling at different altitudes and different speeds. Here, let's put this back on zero. And let's go ahead and file preview that in Firefox. The first one I previewed in was Chrome. And let's go ahead and file preview that in Internet Explorer. And we get the same effect in all the different browsers. Now, just one note to you guys. Uh, the data set property might not be available in old outdated browsers. So you can use the get attribute method in JavaScript to access all these custom data attributes. So you can just go ahead and research the get attribute method and that will give you a means, a way to have all of this working in very outdated older browser softwares. But the data set property is available in all modern browsers. So if you're not worried about back support for very old outdated browsers, you can just use the data set property. But if you want back support for old outdated browsers you have to use the get attribute method okay so that shows you exactly how to set up your custom data attributes in the HTML how to target them through CSS if you have that need and how to script against them using JavaScript so you can access all of those values that you put in place and it's pretty simple there's really not anything complex about it but this example might be a little complex for beginners, so let me break it down with a more simple example. So I'm just going to remove all of this script. Actually, I'm going to take this line right here, Control X, because I'm going to use that line as a reference. I'm going to remove all the style and crap, and, and let me remove this second div as well. And we'll just leave it with that first div. Now what we'll do is type in a script element, make sure we close it. And we're going to do a simple alert just for testing purposes. And we'll put that line in that we cut out. So let's remove this and let's put in document.getElementById. And we'll set an ID for that instead of a class. We'll call it ID Rocket 1. And then we'll put that right there. Document.getElementById, Rocket 1, dataset, altitude, remove the semicolon. And now that should. Uh, alert us the value of 100 because we're accessing the data set altitude custom attribute see alert 100 we change that to poop we'll get that value returned so there you go so that's some more bare-bones look at how to set up these 
custom data attributes and access them through your JavaScript. You don't have to have a big complex program. You can have just one line that accesses whatever value that you want in any of these data attributes. Now I only set up this example just in case some beginners might have trouble understanding what we were doing with that short little program that we wrote right here. But this is the example that I'll have on the page at developphp.com. Make sure it works. Now, like I said, there's many, many, many different types of scenarios that you can use it for. You don't have to use it for activating rockets like I'm doing here. This was just an example that I felt like setting up that I felt would uh, demonstrate how to script against these with JavaScript. Now, these can these can be paragraph elements. These can be buttons, lists, form inputs, whatever you want to use. And you can put any custom data that you want in those elements for any custom programming scenario for your for your particular website or your particular programs that you're scripting. And as a final reminder, the data set property is for modern browsers. And for old outdated browsers, you could just use the get attribute method, which will be a safe way for it to work in old outdated browsers and new browsers. But the data set property is recommended for modern browsers. And as we go on to the into the future, you'll see data set property used. But the get attribute method can be used as well. Okay, I hope this tutorial helps you guys in understanding how to use and apply and script against custom data attributes when you want to add more information or store more data for your HTML elements when the normal attributes don't make sense to use for that data. Okay, be good to one another. I'll see you guys in the next video.